All right, I'm in a bad mood. I had such a fun thing ready for this, and it fucking was ruined by all all my technical problems. I was so mad when you started saying, "What's that fart sound?" Yeah, because I didn't have the headphones on, so I was like, "Wait, what are they? What are they hearing?" Yeah, and it was uh, it was spoiled. Long, long fart. I was sound. gonna play. Let me explain the bit. It's always funny when you explain a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to uh, do two of Tova's Night Terrors in a row. We were going to talk about the Night Terrors, of course. Uh -huh. And then for the third one, I was going to be like, this is an old one I found, and it was this. <laughs> and the fart played... <laughs> Early before early. this recording began, and uh, Tova, knowing she put the complexities Sherlock. of my <laughs> comedic mind, immediately <laughs> knew where it was going. <laughs> Welcome to The Downside. <laughs> my name's Jamarco Sarezi. I'm here with my co-host, Russell Daniels. Hello. Uh, uh, this is an evergreen episode. This, we're saving this. What does that mean? That means he's not going to put this out unless he's fucked one week, and he oh, needs an episode. Okay. So it's going to come out in like... We'll be broken up by the time this comes out. Because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes for work, when I like have to do the social media calendar, they'll be like, use an evergreen, and that's like something I can use. So you haven't known the definition of that no, in all the times you've been no, doing it for I, work? I, for me, it meant like something we've already done that we can use again like whenever. Sure, so sure. So I guess we can use this whenever. Uh, that, yeah. that makes sense now. It's in not this like context. time sensitive. But I, for my mind, I was like, are we going to keep replaying this one? Like, like just like just you know, every any, week. Anytime we need Patreon, it's just, just this over this and over again. I think, I think, listen, people have asked for Tova. People we had asked. Tova episodes specifically for the Patreon that I don't think anyone listened to, <laughs> but they were good. Uh, we talked about making when we when when Tova and I first started uh, knowing each other. This was during COVID, mm -hmm. and uh, we, I I basically we, we would talk. It was me, her, and Carly Hugendijk, mm -hmm. and then Carly would go home, and Tova and I would stay up and talk. And I posted on my Instagram. I said <laughs> at four in the morning. I like four in the morning. I was like, do you ever meet someone and you're just like, you want to start a podcast with them? And I was like, I think he likes me. <laughs> And so I had to, you that know, Russell, John Marco? I think Jamarco has a crush yeah, on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a long play. <laughs> so I had to go through a lot of things to get to this point. Yeah. But I finally uh, got her on the podcast. Uh, Toba, do you want to say something sad to, to kick us off? Oh, for, my God. oh, I didn't even prepare. I'm such an avid listener. You can say any. I mean, listen, I've heard you say 10 negative things today. <laughs> Surely you can think of one. Uh, <laughs> people are using cilantro too much and it's ruining my life. This is the downside. Nope. One, two, three. Downside. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Just for listeners, uh, you know, I feel sometimes on this podcast, I, I some people express views that I don't agree with. I don't believe the cilantro allergy is real. <laughs> and I think Tom has been making it up for John attention. John Marco's been gaslighting there... me this whole time <laughs> about my allergies, about everything. <laughs> Um, list all the allergies really quick. Okay, you're going okay. to a wedding. You got 30 okay, seconds well, to list okay, everything. Okay, so there's on the way to the wedding, the pollen, the dander, the trees, the grass, mm -hmm. the cats. I'm allergic to grass too. Grass, okay. all the when I did an allergy test when I was in elementary school in New Orleans, I was allergic to every single type of tree they tested me for. So all that cats, fuck cats. Sorry, Russell. That's okay. Um, and then when we get to the wedding, it's bananas melon except watermelon dates and then that's the allergies then i don't like i have the cilantro gene where it tastes like soap it's not an allergy i know i said it was an allergy <laughs> an i know this it's an and aversion. then i uh don't like lamb i think it tastes like wooly like it's the texture i don't like and then um i don't i keep kosher so i don't eat shellfish or pork product you can have bananas i didn't know that. <sighs> i know no smoothies. Just like you, well, well, you'll get like swollen or. It's all. How the good the thing is all of it's very mild. Uh -huh. So like I'm not going to die from any of it. I'm not going to go into anaphylactic shock except mm -hmm. cats. I like almost did. She was, was fucked up a, for a week after we. Yeah. Oh after your God. house. I didn't want to oh make a no. deal of it. But I was like truly ill for my yeah. eyes. But my eyes get like 
itchy and swollen and goopy and like this i was just like wet for like a week just like Whoa. rolling down my face yeah, and then i'll get like itchy under my ribs like uh-huh. for food and stuff or like i can't scratch it because it's inside yeah um is that the same like that. for for grass and trees like you that's itchy more eyes. yeah it's itchy eyes that's it's me the goopy like like when i used judge. to mow the lawn people my family thought i was like being like like dramatic that yeah. like I didn't want to mow the lawn, but I would like start crying and I couldn't stop sneezing and my eyes would get yes. all red and it's cut grass. It would like it would just dry. It drives me like really really crazy. So for new listeners of the downside, as you can tell, our guest is Jewish. I <laughs> uh, I well, thank you for 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 joining. We we've had a lot of requests to have Tova on. Tova's my my girlfriend. Uh, as of this recording, we're recording this October tenth, two thousand twenty-two. I had someone in LA. It was after a show, and they they listened to the podcast, and they said, "You you always talk about your girlfriend, Marco, my girlfriend, Cerezi." Aww. And uh, she didn't mean it in a good way. It was like so sweet, but she meant You're it like, like girlfriend enough. guy, wife guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is your whole brand. I can tumble your whole brand. <laughs> I've definitely like working on the opener that is like about you right out the gate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Uh, what is the Uncle Function apology video going to look like when you fire Gianmarco for cheating on me one day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would God. Be... <laughs> we talked about it. If we had been around each other that day doing one for Jessica. Yeah, I said it would have been funny. Like doing one for Jessica. So for new <laughs> listeners, uh, uh, my name is Gianmarco. This is a, uh, a podcast where we celebrate the negatives, uh, uh, t- talk cynically, but in a fun way. But there's there's no positivity here. There's no bright side. Except for a moment at the end, um, if if you're a fan of this podcast, we got we got live episodes. I'm contractually obligated to say we got live episodes oh. every Tuesday, four to five p.m. EST on the new Amp app, Amazon's new app. Uh, we're doing great episodes there with very few very listeners. Very interesting folks. Our last episode was so fucking fantastic, yeah. and I hope she didn't see the number in the corner that said six. Indicating that uh, other than me and Russell, there were four other listeners, <laughs> including her, see, three others. You got to stop saying that because we can't see it. As they changed it, for right? Us. You can't see it. So the the you listener, can't even see it. I can't even see it. Because when we had Dan Savage on, I had a moment of yeah. just like, I'm waiting for him to be like, does that number four mean f- one person's listening or four people are listening? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, either way, I'm fucking out of here. I'm Dan Savage. Yeah, no, and that was a great episode too. The um the uh, well, here's I can say that I can see the faces, and sometimes it's the same three faces <laughs> in the bottom corner, you know. So I know that those three people are here. Um, and sometimes one of them leaves, and and sometimes then I see it's a you see them walk maybe one other face. So there is a thing where, um, but we can't get the number anymore. I think they changed that. So people, Good, thank people God wouldn't see it and be like oh i'm not listening to this but even the well we can't talk about it <laughs> we're releasing this a bit we can talk some shit uh, uh i do want to say if you if you want to listen to those episodes though they are very good and we release them on our patreon yes. patreon.com slash downside and i think i'm gonna have a new patreon goodie uh soon i'm recording a clean album in december okay all right this will probably come out before then i'm gonna record a clean <laughs> album it's just for sirius xm just to make that sweet clean sellout money yeah where I talk about how much I love God, and uh, but I think I'm going to film it, and I'm going to release just the film thing as a special just for the Patreon. Oh, okay, great. So finally something extra for the Patreon. But people have been asking for us to have Tovan. Uh, uh, in a way, you've, you've, you've had a lot of airtime on this podcast. With and, the Night uh, Terrors? We do. Yes, we have some Night Terrors. It's been a bit because they got better, mm-hmm. but thankfully for our listeners, they've been getting worse again. <laughs> Interesting. I feel like, Gianmarco, you have such a conflict in yourself because you don't want them to be better. You want to sleep through them mm. and not have it affect you, but you want them to be. He wants that I content. think being a stand-up comedian, there, there's a feeling of when bad things happen, including like in life, outside of like night terrors, but it's the same thing. There's like, a, oh, this is going to be a good story. And, yeah. I, and I can understand that sometimes in the moment. Yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. the thing is too bad. Yeah. You're out of, you know, when my dad had the heart surgery, it took a couple seconds before I realized this is going to be a good bit. Yeah, a chunk. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm working on a chunk. So, so I, I, we have so much to talk about, but I do, I feel like we owe it to our listeners to talk about some of these night terrors. Yeah. They have been coming back. Uh, this was, this was literally three days ago. This okay. One. He's going <laughs> to. <laughs> So, what do you think started that? 
<laughs> okay, so this this is the okay. nightmare. I believe this first one I was not there for. Uh, uh, yes, here we go. No, don't separate the earrings. Do not separate the earrings. <sighs> Do not separate the earrings. <laughs> Oh my god, don't ever do that. Stupid fucking <gasps> Oh my glasses. Okay. No. Okay, hold on. I would call Wait. that sleep talking. Yeah, that one's not okay. that's not terror. That's what I've been telling you. That's not terror. I, that's I'm moving an into sleep woman, talking like, phase. You know. And I think that's good. I feel like and I'm tired of this term, but I do think it's appropriate here. There's a bit of gaslighting going on <laughs> where I keep being told that the night terrors are like Okay, right? Night whispers. Okay, here's night another. Night complaints. Here's That's another. just like, yeah. just like being like, <laughs> night grievances. Night annoy. yeah. Night grievances, because she's just like, don't separate uh, the earrings. Like, okay. And it's like, it's like if you go to your earring drawer, I'm assuming, and like, you, you, you're missing one. And you're missing one. Why would yeah, you separate them? Yeah, where does that come them? from? I don't want them to be. <laughs> I feel it's like, it's like a normal grievance. He's also, and it wasn't yelling. It was no. very much like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's yoy. also like, where does that come from? I'm like, maybe because there's so much shit all over the room that I'm like, the earrings are going to get lost. Oh. I've never Am separated the earrings, though. I've never separated the earrings. <laughs> well, do you know she's I've never talking to you? The earrings. She's talking to herself. Okay. I wonder if she is talking to me, Russell. <laughs> let's see this next. Let's see this oh, next. Cue the night next whisper. <laughs> oh my god. A whimper. I don't know. I can't go with tights. <gasps> John Marco. Uh, 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 I told. What's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. I can't go with John Marco. I can't go with. What's wrong, sweetheart? I can't go. I can't go. So where? Sweetheart. To the airport. Do you want to go to the airport? <laughs> yeah, because... Come back to bed, sweetheart. No. You can go to the airport anytime you want. No, but I can't. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 4.05 a.m. I didn't want to get in trouble. <laughs> So I didn't want to. When he asked the Alexa, I think in my sleep I was like, "Don't say," because he'll be mad that it's. I know it's in the middle of the night. Because I pray and when I, when I get woke up, I'm like, "Please let it be like eight. Let it be seven fifty right never. before it's, I'm about to wake up." That's not how my REM works. There's something really funny about Tova's night terrors, but there's also something really funny about your awake. Your first well, awaking voice is very funny to me. That here's you're why. Just I, like, <laughs> 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 funny. like imagine, imagine it's a movie and this is us. We're in our eighties now. Yeah. We're we're still together. <laughs> and then I just because list just listen to the voice because yeah. that's what it makes yeah. me think of oh my god like i don't know i can't go with tights <gasps> john marco uh, 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 uh. I told what's wrong it's like you don't have what's your wrong? dentures in you don't yes, have your dentures exactly. in <laughs> exactly. so old there. i can't go with <laughs> um i do love that john marco <laughs> that is very funny um so, but do you get, like, were you up in this? Did you get out of the bed? That this? one I did get out, and I yeah. sat at the edge of the bed. Mm. So I I had a sleepwalking phase. Last night you came into the into the kitchen area. So I did? Of. Yeah, you, you came into the kitchen. I said, <laughs> where are you going? Were you still up? I you, yeah, I was still up. I was like, sometimes I was, like, I was working on, like, a lines here. Yeah. And I walked her back to the the <laughs> room, and I was like, "Let's let's go back down." He's also twice come home, and I've fallen asleep to a TikTok. Oh my god! And it's god, just playing god. over and over again. I'm just like. <sighs> and what's so funny is because it means that she was swiping, and like there was that final swipe where like yeah. she had enough consciousness to go swipe, no, and then I've done that on Twitter or uh, Instagram, and that makes me nervous of like liking something or you know what I mean, well, like like because well, hello, you like I've texted him full sentences in my sleep. No, I meant like, like, yeah, if you're like, if you're like falling asleep and you're like phone, you're just like kind of like hand is on an open phone, you could like move it and like something or retweet something, what, you know. I said is that like, what happened with the Kanye anti jewish <laughs> tweet? <person? laughs> Look, I, as someone with night terrors, I empathize with, no. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I've texted John Marco like full, like, where's the oil? We need the oil. And it's like four in the morning. And that I'm was you asleep. talking like an accent, like no, talk I sent texting? A, no, oh. I typed it. Because we, we only had Where's enough the oil, oil for one night. It ended up lasting <laughs> eight. eight crazy <laughs> ones. Um, so so let's talk about these night terrors. Yeah. You uh, really don't think you had them as a kid. Nothing like no. this as a kid. No. My mom sleep talks. And so I think it's my mom sleep talks and my dad has sleep apnea. 
and I have sleep apnea, but I refuse to look like a fucking dork and wear the machine. <laughs> Your story's gotten better. But We're I definitely at a point that I think if someone saw, like... Like you're you're such a good sleeper that when she snores, I just I kind of shake you and just go, you're snoring, <laughs> and you move or something clears out of the way. Well, I think that's I think it's a lot of times if you hear a lot of my night hairs start with a, <gasps> and I th- I think it's connected to the the sleep apnea yeah, yeah, yeah. where I'm woken up by like a gasping yeah. for air, and that triggers whatever anxiety and that anxiety is whatever yeah. subconscious yeah. I have from the day, and that's the spiral uh-huh. and. For a, I feel like it shifted a long time. My night terrors were like someone's breaking in the apartment mm-hmm. and someone's stealing things. And a lot of my n- walking, my sleepwalking was that too, where I'd wake up and be like, where's my computer? It's in my hamper. Where's yeah. my jewelry? I shoved it under the bed. And so I think it's because I got mugged. And So where what, what station were you mugged at? Spring Street on the C train platform at like nine o'clock at night. It wasn't that late. It was before the pandemic. So it was also before, you know, things overall got more shifty in New York. It was Uh a pretty safe situation. I was sitting on the subway platform on the bench and I was texting and a guy just walked by and just grabbed my phone out of my hands. I was obviously playing that like candy crush game. I play. Yeah. Um, he grabbed it and kept walking and I was, um, I was flying to LA the next day to do a work trip and it was like an important work trip. It was like I was early on in my job. So uh-huh. I was like, yeah. and I think it was the holiday party. Prob- I don't remember. It was something like that. Like, yeah, it was like a big trip. And my fight or flight was, I'm going to L.A. tomorrow and I need my phone. Like, there was no version in my head where I wasn't going to L.A. And you can't go to L.A. without your phone. Yeah. And so I that just triggered something in me. And I chased him, pushed him grabbed my phone back we got into an altercation he turned around and grabbed me and then we ended up on the concrete on the subway platform my one of my contacts fell out of my i'm blind without my contacts my contacts fell out um you did not what you never told me that detail what that your contacts fell out one of them and i gotta say that one of the big recurring night terrors is my my eyes. eyes My eyes. Oh, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You've never shared that <laughs> this detail is a before. This is therapy. Where wow. my eyes? Because I, I, I have a video. Clip. I have Where a video. We can, we, can put it in, we can put it into the... Here, keep talking a story because yeah. I want to pull up. There's a video recently where I, 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 oh, I got a midnight tear. I, sometimes I rarely get the videos because it happens really fast. <laughs> but she, uh, I went to the bedroom and she sat up fully with from sleep with glasses on her eyes she had put them on in her sleep and said where are my glasses <laughs> and they were on her okay i'll find it but, Anyways, but yeah. so so then um my phone like in the shuffle then this no one on the subway platform helps except for this one tiny woman who gets involved helps tries to push him away from me and then while this is happening my purse like the contents of my purse fall out and my wallet and you know it falls out and you know in a movie when like the in an altercation the gun falls out yes and then it kind of slides across the floor they all look and they all go for it yeah that's exactly what happened where literally it was like in a movie my wallet slides across the three of us lunge he grabs it we both lunge towards him and at this point i think he when he started this whole thing, he's like, I'll steal a phone. He yeah. was not, he didn't sign up for this. He didn't expect to be yeah. in a fight with two feisty women. And so I think at this point, he was just like pissed off. And so he just threw my wallet onto the subway tracks and left. Oh. And so I ended up getting my wallet off the tracks. Like they helped me. I got my phone, I got everything. But I was like, my arm over the course of the next week, a pamphlet of bruises showed up. My yeah. arm was fucked up. My thumb was fucked up. And it, I think, I, I mean, for a long time, like, I don't I don't know how like PTSD works like the very clear like afterwards I was traumatized like it was like clutching my purse yeah. and like it scared to be on the train and like very having stressful moments and then over time that went away but I think what remained was um these <laughs> these night terrors that I get and a lot of it was like someone's breaking in someone's breaking in and when did you first because obviously it's something that like do, do, do you notice, did you start noticing those weird things to, to tell the, the Columbia incident? That's yeah. when like you, but you knew by then. Yeah, I think so. I think that's ar- probably around when it was like starting to get bad. But I, before the mugging, I w- would sleepwalk. So it, uh-huh. it's been an issue before. And like, 
in my sleep once I thought someone was coming through the window and I jumped out of bed and I banged on the window and it hairline fra- like cracked across uh, the whole window. That was oh before my the God. mugging. And so that was where I was like, I've done, I've done it once. That before. was before the mugging. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why you have to do podcasts sometimes because you're like, wait I've a second. I've said this before. No I way. I told you this before. And another time I've like jumped on my laundry basket and like hit the side on oh like a God. metal whatever. And like, oh my God. It's always been a thing, but I've gone through phases like right after college. I think it's anxiety related because it was like right after college or this or that. And um, I think the sleepwalking happened right around the time where I had a job that I was like really unhappy at and really stressed about. And when I left that and started a new job, it was um, that went away. And then I think the mugging brought in the night tears. And I think the sleepwalking is how I got diagnosed as sleep apnea. And that was before the night tears. Now, when you broke the window, did you wake up and realize what you'd done? Yeah. Or you went right... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, then you're just in this, like, panic. There's a phase... So there's a night terror phase where it's, like... And also, it's not dreaming. I'm not having this dream someone's breaking in. Am I... Like, I don't go... Like, whenever I have a bad dream, it's separate. Or, like, a dream... Yeah. Like, whatever. So when I'm in this, this night terror state, I'm not aware of it at all. Yeah. Internally or externally and then if someone like joe marco wakes me up or like i'll mid action i'll kind of realize what's happening but it takes a few then i'll wake up but it takes a few seconds to realize what's reality and what's not so there is like a lucid period where i am awake i know it was a night terror i know but i i have trouble like articulating what's reality right. and then i'll have reality right. i like play so this is one where i feel like you can see in the moment now we're both naked in this clip so disregard that <laughs> but i can in this uh-huh. moment i feel like there's a moment where you your brain recognizes you're being like silly but then you're still in the night terror that's what i'm saying like, and yeah. so okay so ray uh we're gonna add this in post it's gonna cost me a thousand dollars uh but here is me typical night coming home to tova Yes, baby. Do you have a blood? You all right? Do you have um, a pair of my glasses? <laughs> oh, wait, I have some stuff. You're wearing the same. Uh, no, another pair to have on hand in case. <laughs> in case he's getting They won't get the same. <laughs> That really feels like a bit. Like, <laughs> like, 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 I mean, it's clearly not. Yeah. But, like, it is so funny to be, like, to, like, be so sleepy and serious and then be like, do you know where my glasses are? Where yeah. Are your glasses? Do you have multiple pairs of glasses? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, you that, know, that's what we thought the solution. I said, let's let's make it fucking rain, <laughs> rain with glasses. glasses. 12 <laughs> pairs of glasses around the apartment. Now, you had, you still have the old, the, the one from Columbia. This is where you were staying oh, yeah. with friends. I'll play it. Uh, send it to me, and I'll, I'll okay. try to add, put it in right now. I don't know if I can do it but, midstream, but we'll but try. But, yeah, basically me and three friends, we went on a trip to Columbia, and we were in it, sharing a hotel room, two and two in a bed, and I had a night terror that then um, woke everyone up, and it was so scary to them that they all started screaming, and it was um, – it's my favorite one. Uh, it? No, okay. Send it to me, and I'll put it on the thing. It's better that way. Okay. Uh, so – so yeah, it's it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Uh, clonopin helps, but but you, you kind of chilled out with clonopin nope. for a bit. Yeah, I will say it was tougher for me when I was dating because it was just awkward to be with men who you know I didn't want to like put them in an awkward position. I forget like what your <laughs> warning to me was. Oh yeah. Like what? Like what did you tell me? Like what did you have a lot? Like a, a. I don't think I had like a, like it's not like that was happening all, all the time. Would you tell it to the Would you tell it to the guy like during dinner, or like before you fell asleep? Before I fell asleep, sure. I feel like that's the way to go. Yeah, I feel like it would be you know why early on you know. Sure. All right, I'm gonna see. This could fuck up the whole recording. We're gonna give it a shot. I'm putting this over the fart that works so hard to get. (laughs) Um. So and and what did uh. Do you remember any times where the guy in the morning was like, Jesus, that Probably, was bad. Probably. I blocked out every man aside from you, so I, I, nothing's coming to mind. All right, let's see if it works. Wait. It's me. It's me. It's just me. I just scared the shit out of I'm so sorry. 
Wait, I, I want to get to the, the, I want to get to that, the, the beginning so, of that sounds like like a, a warm the shine. So, yeah. So just I want to clean a bit. So this is Tova hanging out with friends, and you didn't warn them that you have night terrors. I think I don't know. I'm trying to remember. You can warn people, but if yeah. they're in a the dead sleep, it doesn't or matter. If they're like they're not gonna. You know, Anna wasn't like. It's it's her night hairs when yeah, she's yeah. four in the morning for her too. No, she was a little country. more like this. It's just like you terrorizing this group. Who's saying? Who's so quickly going? It's Tova. It's Tova. It's Tova. That's you. Yeah. Oh, in the dark, you're saying it's Tova. It's Tova. It's Tova. It's the same way when you asked Alexa what time it was, and I went shh. It's me, like, yeah. starting to sort of realize what's going oh, on and not wanting it. to, like, make people freak out. Now, you said, because I've noticed that it doesn't happen as often in hotels. It doesn't happen really on planes. Uh, Once it happened on my flight back from England, like a long plane ride. But short, I sleep on every plane and it doesn't happen. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, that, would be, that would be stressful, the plane thing. So, like, what's, what's left for us to do? Well, you said we so, have. You said so for a while it was better. We, is there we, any way well, to pinpoint? Well, for a while a, it was like bad. Like it was bad for a bit, and also like to be fair, Tova and I and now Tova lives with me, but both of our places are like right by the street, and we'll listen. We have this Night yeah. Terror app that basically records only. That the reason we have all these is because it only records when there's like noise, and you'll hear it all the time though. Probably every night there's yeah. Noise. I mean like yeah. like. There, there's a lot of just beeps and honks, and you're like, "Jeez, yeah. at four a in the morning, times, someone just laid on the John horn." Marco yeah. will fall asleep listening to the Anthony Jeselnik's podcast. So for like an hour and a half, it's just Anthony Jeselnik speaking, <laughs> and then me. Thirty minutes. One, I put it on a thirty-minute timer. Night terror. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it doesn't sound like the ones you played today. Again, I don't feel like those are. Yeah, that's those different. are like those are pretty chill. You yeah. know. Uh -huh. they're, there's standard, others, like, they're sitting up. There's a lot of. There's a beginning of forming words. You, where, there's one you where, where, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I mean, it's jarring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, we have the clonopin. Yeah, we used to like take sleep hygiene seriously, as they say. We're like we would read, uh -huh. and now. It's just chaos. It's hard to stay in that <laughs> Sleep routine. hygiene is real tough. I can't. I mean, it's like it's I the can, only time I have. I know. It, I, I feel like I can see myself doing that kind of thing for like two weeks and then you're yeah. like, eh. you know, like it just feels very hard. Because I have friends too that um, they do the same kind of routine and they also both always go to bed at the same time. And that feels very stressful to me too. I couldn't. Like I to mean, be like, you know, no. like this just like, I mean, especially you're, you have late gigs and, and things like that and sure it's just uh that feels like i would feel yeah no, that. tova goes to bed earlier than I would me just be and wakes up later like than three me. hours just like <laughs> wide awake you know um yeah. so so yes yeah, so we should talk about uh uh, uh judaism because i think we're i i do want to have your sister on at some point because your yeah. sister is still practicing though it's like one of those things where it's like i know your sister like could take me being like what's that yeah John Marco. Was. They went to London recently, I th and yeah. her sister, yeah, wonderful Shoshana. sister Shoshana. Uh huh. Uh, I they she can only use kitchenware that's bathed. If I have it right, it's it's Christian baby's blood. <laughs> no. And so they got there and they had to take all these pans and knives and a whole kitchen set. They, they had to if, buy a whole if, new kitchen set. Because yeah. if they prepared meat before. Well, right? yeah. So, but it's not even just she can't use my grandmother's like kitchenware. If you buy, her grandmother is not Jewish. Yeah, my mom converted to Judaism, and so my mom's family is not Jewish. So her house obviously has not does not have kosher pots and pans. So if you buy your own pots and pans to use for yourself, so that my sister can my sister so that she can have things that have not been cooked with non-kosher things, you also have to do a step where when you first buy it, you have to immerse it. And Have you heard of a mikvah? No. A mikvah is like the ritual bath in Judaism. Okay. So you do that, like women do that after they get their, finish their period so that they're clean again and like pure for their husbands. Yeah. Like it's like, it, and men do it before high holidays, but you also do it with your pots and pans. And a mikvah is like a collection of Different, like, different pools than the period, the post period. I don't think so. We're just washing water same pool of water for everything yeah 
Okay. I think so. Maybe there's two sometimes, but, um, but you can do it in like an open body of water. So uh, my grandma lives in like rural England. There's not a Jewish community that, there. So there's not this ritual bath that has yeah. to be specially constructed. So my sister bought all these pots and pans and a giant kitchen knife to have because she was there for a month in England yeah. with my grandmother. And so we went to the beach and my sister shows up with a bag full of pots and pans and a giant knife. And we're at the beach. People are playing and frolicking at the beach. And she's just like throwing a knife in the water and trying to grab it and praying. And it's the videos I have are the funniest thing. We were all dying of That's laughter so because funny. she's so committed Committed to the craft. No, and now, you're laughing at her. Does it make her no, go like, guys, please stop no, laughing. Was, this is my belief of no, God. She's, she has a sense of humor and she, I think she understands the silliness of the situation as well. She believes in it. She believes it's important. The rituals matter. But yeah, in Memphis, where my family lives, you'd go do it at the synagogue in the bath yeah. where it's meant to be. You, She understands that it's weird to, to do is it. Is there something where you bury the plates? That yes, if, but I'm trying to remember. That's not not right. That's uh, I, I saw. Oh, I remember it was in an episode of Kirby Enthusiasm. Yeah, so I was trying to I can't remember. remember. I honestly the, I don't remember, remember the context this of like. It was Russ is just gonna say things he's heard about plates. Jews and be like true or false. <laughs> true I think or it false. was plates that had been used. Yeah, with, like bacon had been on them or something. Yeah, you were supposed to bury the thing. plates. And I think for uh, a certain amount of time, and the dirt gets it's. Yeah. There's a whole like books and books on like kosher. Yeah. laws it's not just don't eat pork or shellfish there's the minutia is like for example you're supposed to separate meat and milk meat and dairy you're mm -hmm. not supposed to have a cheeseburger but that also means like if you cook mac and cheese in one pot you can't make a brisket in that pot you have to have a separate set of dishes for your meat so then mm. there's things like an onion or like but if you like chop that a vegetable and it's cold on a meat thing, you could put it in a dairy thing because it's not transferring anything yeah. because it's all cold and it's a vegetable and it's not a meat or a dairy thing. It's parv, which is kind of the neutral. But an onion is like a more sharp food where it does pick up the flavors. Mm -hmm. It does transfer. So you can't cut an onion on a meat cutting board and then use it in a dairy thing. Got it. Or it's a meat knife. So there's like, it's crazy now how... Where, okay, because I get there's the Old Testament. Yeah. The, is that, that's the Torah. Yeah. What's what? Where else are these written? Because I hear these rules, and I'm like, well, this isn't in all in the Old Testament. No, what's so, what's the next? Is that the number one? So and this is number two, yeah. So that's the Old Testament, and for all the any Jews listening, I'm sure I'm gonna fuck some of this shit up. I I did go to school, I did study this. I'm gonna mess up some of it. So come for me in the comments and correct. But yeah, so there's the Old Testament, the Bible, the Tanakh, is Torah, prophets, and uh, another one writings. Uh, anyways, sorry, that's that's the Old Testament. There's no the saying... Old Testament is the 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 old is the Old Testament. Okay, and then there's like the prophets, which I think is also like. And the prophets is is that part of what we consider to be the Bible or no? No, I don't think so. Like I have a Bible here. No. Okay. It's separate, but I think Christians also it says in prophets, it says in blah blah mm. blah. You know. Okay. But then on the Torah part, on the Old Testament. There are initial commentators who will, one's Rashi, one's Uncleus. It's these guys that will explain certain things where it's like, okay, when they said this, this is what it can be explained to. And, and so we have the first commentaries on the Torah. And then from there, over the generations, these rabbis kind of extrapolated and extrapolated. And there's, that's where the Talmud comes from, if you've heard of that, which is, that's the like, that's the main book where most of the laws are broken out from. It's all like... And when was the Talmud... When was that one <sighs> written? <laughs> Mrs. Rifkin would be so upset with me. <laughs> the charts I made trying to memorize this. I have no idea. How Some big is that book? Is bigger than the Bible? Books is this and like books. A, it's books and books. Books and books. 24 books? I don't know. Wow. 24 books. Maybe. A lot of books. Oh, my God. And basically... That's why they're always reading it on the train. They gotta <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there's like something you, like you learn a page of it a day, and I think it takes like seven years to get. Is any the whole of it fun and story, or is it like a legal textbook? Because I don't know if you've ever read the Bible. No, no I was trying at one point, and that like there's, I believe it's in Leviticus, yeah. where it starts like truly, it's like listing uh, recipes for if you have a boil on your head, make make a, a sacrifice thing this many cubits by this many cubits, sacrifice yeah. three yeah. goats, and at a certain point, you're like, it feels like you're reading. The most dated medical book. Talmud is like a it's like a legal like law school book or a philosophy, but it's it's just kind of like it's 
it's kind of a transcription of the rabbi sitting around doing this and being like, okay, but if you have an onion and that's not meat or dairy, does that matter? And then Russell would be like, well, an onion will pick up the flavors and you'll go, oh, so may, and then it's us discussing. And then they kind of have a bottom line of like, which opinion do we follow? Oh, okay. So it's a lot of like that sort of thing. And there's stuff like that. I think you would find interesting. Like there's sorts of things where it's like, what happens if you get a woman pregnant, this or that, like th there's literally a scenario. What do you do? The, there's a scenario where it's like How you're working you <laughs> what if you're working on a roof and you fall dick first into a woman and get her pregnant like That's what the scenario yes and I women there's no way they say dick first though right <laughs> like what they must what they and say so and you're, Sean, you're on the Shandala. roof and you fall and you fall dick first into a woman uh -huh. what it's, is the it's all culmination of the <laughs> <laughs> responsibilities towards a child um yeah it's like a lilt it's like kind of a sing-songy um quality and a it. lot of things would have to happen first why were you fully erect uh, on, on the, the roof? roof see you would like it yeah. You would like it. it. I think we're reaching fun. the amount that I would enjoy it right here in this podcast room. <laughs> I, I do think that there's a fun thing of like seeing the origin of the, like seeing a little bit of the debate on the yeah. page is somewhat more interesting so than, that you're not just, than told, just the rule. But by the way, that you is know? something sure. to, to give credit to Judaism. I do think we're very much look, there isn't a bottom line of like what you're supposed to do, but there is for the most part explanation and, and, and thought behind it. There's a few rules I think I forget exactly many, but there's not that many where they are ones that have no explanation. And those are like the blind faith ones. Like, why do you keep kosher? There is no real reason. There's no real reason other than God told you to. But pretty much like murder. But they suspect and adultery. that things like things about like not eating bacon. Like we all suspect it's because of health there was and health reasons. Probably. And it's nowhere written. What, like, could they say no. you don't eat bacon because you can make up because God made the sick no, I, I, yeah, I they don't just think go so. faith. Yeah. What's the word for faith in Hebrew? Emuna. Emuna. Mm. Um, <laughs> okay, so by speaking of kosher, we've I, I, I've, I've convinced you to eat oysters. Yeah, and then you ate a second oyster on your own accord, like later. Yeah, oysters and are tough if you're not like oysters are tough. If you're, I, they're, they're, there's such weird... a texture thing for well, them. I think I texture oysters, is the whole name of the game. Well, I think it's, yeah, it's also for seafood. Well, for me, like at this point. There's twofold. None of it for me is religious anymore. And I guess we should zoom back and say how religious I was. But and where I, you know what I mean? But like it you just quoted the whole Talmud to us. We understand <laughs> this used to be an important part of your life. None of it is like God will get me in trouble. It, but I think first I like the cultural aspect. I like saying I'm Jewish. Part of being Jewish is I don't eat pork or shellfish. I think the same way you meet a lot of modern Muslims who don't eat pork. Like to me, there's that aspect. And then I just grew up not eating it where it, it does, I don't look at it and go, oh, I wish I could have that. And yeah. seafood smells weird But it to must me. be frustrating when we went to Hawaii. We yeah. had one dinner in Hawaii where it was like we ordered two dinners for two. And almost everything felt like it wasn't. It's very, there's very, like, honestly, ironically, where I grew up in New Orleans, like, that's a city where it is extremely hard to navigate because both yeah. are so prevalent. I felt like Hawaii was one of those places yeah. where pork and seafood are so prevalent. But m nine times out of ten, all my other shit aside, I can navigate that part of it. I, from an outside perspective, and I'm like, I so desperately, I think there's a frustration of, like, please try bacon, please try pork. And I'm not even, I don't, I hate ham. I've never liked ham. But like just the ability to just oh if I have a dish and there's bacon uh, there's bacon on the dish it's okay to eat the eggs or if it's if it's something in its pork broth or or to me there's a feeling of you have this one life and people <laughs> eat this all the time but I, why don't not you have foods though that like that you a couple uh, foods uh, that yes. you that you like not not for religious purposes but you don't eat that like people have always been like. You gotta try it again. You gotta sure. Like for me, it's 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 crab or lobster, and I don't I'll I don't mind. You I'll, gotta try it though. No, it's no, no, really, no. I've that's eaten, a joke. I know. Oh, that's, okay. that's, I've, uh, I've eaten yeah. both a bunch of times, but the thing is, it's the it just it doesn't really do anything for me. So I'm like, it's honestly a waste for me to like if I'm you know totally fine. You know, I just think if you have the allergies and the kosher, you pick one. <laughs> <laughs> It's my philosophy. <laughs> but I think it's just a feeling of you tried it, though. And it, you tried oysters. You tried yeah. oysters. I think it's just like from an – and again, it's not like I'm it's not like I'm sneaking this into Tova's food yet. But, <laughs> but 
but there is a feeling of there's a feeling of just like do you I do understand what I'm saying. This totally. like this like baby I want to go out to we split dishes all the time. Yeah. And 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 Well, I would argue that my cross to bear is Jamarco not wanting to eat unhealthy food, and that's my uh, annoying uh, thing with splitting dishes. And then he goes, not a, not a totally we'll, go to, unfair we'll point. go to brunch and he'll want two different egg dishes. And I'm like, what is the point of that? I get one egg dish and, and one, one French toast. One bready thing. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I don't eat cake for breakfast. Sorry, I don't eat shrimp for lunch. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, we can yeah. all play this game. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> But I just mean for yourself, is there is there totally. anything in your head? I, and she said, and I've said it before on the podcast, I thought it was so fascinating that you had animal books where the pig is crossed out. Yeah, well, of all the non-kosher things, pigs are like... Disgusting. Disgusting. It's like they're they're just like the, the And you still epitome. feel that? If I had it, a piglet, would you pet it? It's subconscious. It's so su- deep in my subconscious. It's like racism. It's Yes, it's like, it's like um, what's it called? Um, by, the by... Yeah. By uh, prejudice against yeah. pigs. Spe- speciesism? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I, it's just like that, you know, internal sort of thing where I pig, piglets are really cute, and I do recognize that. And I, but but there's that you fight against that first thing it, to get there. It's funny you know that your I mean? argument is piglets are so cute. That's why you eat them. <laughs> yeah. And it's hers. Is, but that's, I but, hate them. But that's why it's surprising that it's not them. just about don't eat them. It's just like they're pigs. gross. Yeah. Like it must have been. Here's my theory, I guess, based on zero research. We're going Joe Rogan on this. <laughs> okay. That that pigs must have be kill, been killing so many people at a certain point in history. Oh, yeah. And they must have been so and something. they must have been so goddamn delicious that like people would not stop. So the Jews Ian were like, knows. "We gotta go oh, fucking overdrive. Funny. They're they're bad. They're everything about them is wrong. Yeah. From alive to dead. Because why? If you can't eat the thing, why do you have to do this alive thing? Like there's certain religions where you don't need a cow, but they don't go like the cow is awful. They go the cow is sacred. Yeah. What if yeah. the pig was sacred? No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. It's um, it's like reviled. It's like the epitome of all. If that she is had seen the piggy could, boy sketch, people, she never would have signed people it. Could still, <laughs> people could still, you know, people. It was the olden times. People did weird things, probably with farm animals mm. too. So they had to be disgusting. That was like, no, no, you can't just yeah, not yeah, eat yeah. them. If you fall off the roof yeah, into yeah. a pig, <laughs> do you finish? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi Lightstone's never gonna invite me to another meal. <laughs> so. I think I've asked you this before, but your mom's not Jewish. She converted. So by your own faith. Sounds like an accusation, not a yeah. question. By your own gotcha. faith. Gotcha. <laughs> he would really like the Talmud. Uh, he literally. <laughs> this is love rules. I love no, rules. But you love like loopholes. And oh, if your mom is not Jewish, but well, convert. Okay. Okay. So there's the other thing. We've talked about where during the, it's called. What's what? What's the tape where you can't use electricity? It's from the Shabbos. Wendell- Shabbos, and that's from. Let me see if I get this right. Sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, first, what's sundown? A little bit dark. I no think sun. It's, it's like before sun. It's twenty five hours, so it's like it's just, right it before even, sundown. Twenty five. It can't even be twenty four just to make it convenient. No, it's for everybody. like before, right before the sun goes down. I forget exactly what time Friday, but then it ends when you see three stars in the sky. Does it change seasonally as as yeah. the sun? Okay. So like in winter, Shabbos ends way earlier, and then in the summers, it ends way later. And then in places like, you know, those places in Alaska where it never gets dark, yeah. Shabbos is like an obscenely long. It like ends at like tw- midnight or mm. whatever, Saturday night. Wow. Okay, so your mom's not Jewish. <laughs> My mom wasn't Jewish, and she... And common misconception, she did not convert for my dad. She's a weirdo who people have been saying. People have been saying, and I just want to. <laughs> well, but, but but that's part of it because people do question the validity of conversions. And if you if you were like, I'm going to convert for him, there's suspicion in the Orthodox world of like, do you actually want this or do you just want to marry this guy? Because then we don't. Because the conversion process is extremely um, long and. Um, it's just there's a lot that you have to do and a lot you have to prove and a lot of shit that you have to study. It's not just like you don't just dip in the ritual bath and then you're done. It's years and years. Is this for is this is this skepticism shown both ways or is it more towards women converting? I think both ways. I think you're supposed to turn away potential converts multiple times, and I think there's a certain amount of times we're not like a proselytizing 
um, group. Like, we don't try to convert non-Jews. We will try. If you see the people on the street go, are you Jewish? It's because they want. And I used to do that um, at Tulane. But they. You would do that to women. To to students. But, yeah, I would hand out, like, Shabbat candles to students. But you weren't doing the men because the men were doing to the men so they could do the. the, Well, women are supposed to do that, too. Okay. Women are supposed to shake the lulav and esrog. It's sukkis right now. I mean, not when this episode comes out next year. But uh, maybe next sukkis. You know what? You think maybe I think the next, like, guy who does the Are You Jewish to me, I'd say, I'll do this if you do my podcast. (laughs) (laughs) They they, they They would do it. Down. They would do it. They want to spread the gospel. Do you speak Yiddish? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, let's do it. no. I have I have a lot of things I want to talk to him about. Okay, uh, so but anyways, so wait, um, your mom. So so it's not you're supposed to turn them away. It's you're really supposed to want it. And so my mom really wanted it, and she's wanted to be Jewish since she was like a kid. I don't know why or whatever. It's something I always took for granted as a kid. I'm like, yeah, my mom converted. And then as you become an adult, you're like, yeah. why would you pick this? Some people feel that. I I've known people who are like. I feel Jewish. Yeah, yeah. It's but but I also think there are people like that that don't go full Monty towards because there's re, yeah, there's like go. there's a lot of denominations, but the main <laughs> are like Reform Judaism, Conservative Judaism, and Orthodox Judaism. And Orthodox is like at, by the book, all the rules. Conservatives kind of like a I don't want to misspeak, but it's a midi thing. It's like you do a lot of the same things. Reforms a little bit more. Um, in spirit like it's more about like making the world better and it's less it's less about the do you consider yourself reformed jewish now what are what would you say Ooh, i don't know i think i align with conservative judaism's like the 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 traditional like for example i went to like the conservatives Dominating. If I have to start telling people that I'm dating a conservative <laughs> no, no, Jew, no, no. different from that. that is be <laughs> when I go to a conservative like prayers, it's the same. It's like the same, but men and women are sitting together, and the food's not necessarily all certified kosher. But maybe you don't eat meat or like non-kosher meat, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, reform. I went to a reform Rosh Hashanah service. The drummer from the Yeah Yeah Yeahs was in the band, and they chanted Bob Dylan lyrics. That's the difference. <laughs> Do you know what well, I the mean? The best, Tova and I, she, we went to a Shabbat dinner, and unfortunately, I can't do that many because it's Friday. It's during stand up yeah. prime time, and <laughs> uh, we went to one in Brooklyn, and and after the Jewish prayers, they then read the uh, astrology charts for the month, and then they passed around a tray of MDMA, oh. and she was like, "This is conservative Judaism. No. It's a little looser." <laughs> uh, so that's what you'd. I don't know. I think I like I don't do it consistently enough to really feel that reform. I think is like that's too that's too far too away loosey-goosey. from it's too loosey goosey for me. When the Bob, how Dylan are you not loosey goosey though? We're pretty loosey goosey. No, like, just the fact that she still does some kosher right. things. She still celebrates the, the, it. I, I want to like, sing the songs. Yeah, it's like I feel like it's like you would say the reformed person for Christianity would be like they go Christmas Eve and that's it really. For once a year, for like, well, you know what I mean? Or, or and it's not even that. It's Christmas. like, it, and sure. it's like they go once a year, and it's it's Mariah Carey. Yes, is their is their church service? Yeah, you know what I mean. So, <laughs> so okay. So my mom uh-huh. converted, and so then she she went to UNC, and she was already like hanging out at the Hill House, which is the Jewish you know group on campus. That's where she met my dad, and. My dad didn't really care, I don't think, so much about being religious. I think he did ultimately want to date someone Jewish because his dad's a Holocaust survivor. Um, So they met while she was still exploring, but she hadn't converted yet. And so they actually got married three times to each other, famously. The first time they got married just like uh, civilly so they could get student housing, and she wasn't Jewish yet. Then she went through the conservative uh conversion process so that was still intense and still required a lot of studying but not the the you know the most extreme group and i think my parents were worried that if she didn't do it all the way there would be people who are jewish that would not consider her jewish Uh to be Mm -hmm. jewish so they didn't want that to be an issue because judaism is matrilineal which means if if my dad wasn't jewish my mom was it we would still be jewish by birth wait if your mom, you know, your mom, yeah. your mom is Jewish, your dad's sure. not, but 
Jews would not consider you half Jewish. Jews would there is no half Jewish in like orthodoxy. Yes. So but if it was just my dad, they would not. Correct. But are there is there any I was about to say strain yeah. of Judaism, and I don't think we should use the word strain. <laughs> uh, uh, is there any sect of Judaism that would not consider you a Jew? Maybe ultra ultra orthodox, and like is that a real term? Two ultras? Yeah. Or are you just saying like, <laughs> like really? Ultra yeah, like really, really, like yeah. And then a lot of Sephardi, which are like. Um, I'm going to fuck up what Sephardi is, but it's like Middle Eastern Jews. It's like Iran. It's Syria. I don't know the same. Sephardi, like that Persian. was the sound cue I was playing. Uh, <laughs> <John> Marco. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's a different type of, uh, it's like, it's like kind of like Anglo, European versus Middle Eastern, if that makes sense. And so those Jews, like Persian Jews, Syrian, they have a lot of issues with conversion in their communities. They're not really about conversion. Uh-huh. So, but then my dad was, was worried that like, yeah, if we don't go all the way, then there are people that it's going to create problems down the, down the line for us. And he was worried about that. And so my mom, I'm the oldest. My mom was already pregnant with me and converted again, Orthodox while she was pregnant with me. Now, do you want to do a Talmudic exercise? Uh, there's three types of Jews level wise. There's the regular Jew. I was about to ask, like, how if, if you were conceived because of the roof situation, that's how. <laughs> 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 there's regular Jews, and then there's like the, the Levium who like worked in the temple and they had a higher, slight, slightly higher status. And then there were the Kohanim, and they are the priests, and they did everything in the in the Jewish temple back in the day. And if you ever met someone whose last name is like Cohen or Katz, they're descendant from like that level. Immediately of, thought of Kat Cohen and Lewis Katz book. Yes, yeah. they are. That no joke. Like they're that's and so they're special and like it's passed down. And every holiday, like they say a special prayer of the Kohanim, and those Jews are not allowed to marry converts divorcees or um i forget the third they're not name. allowed like like cat cohen her dad the dads her, the men the men because that's by the man keep up yeah. <laughs> well here's the thing with judaism because i know russell is is absorbing even less than i am and i'm <laughs> no, barely there. i'm i'm is that like it's test. one of those things i'm like i'm there i'm like i got it i got it conservative a modern Orthodox, and then the next level, it gets deeper but don't and you just, deeper. Don't you just and deeper. don't you recognize that, like, just in life, you're like, like you know people of, of all the levels, don't you? Do you know what I mean? Like, it makes sense to me because I'm like, I see Hasidic Jews. You see, yeah. you know, I know that you're more into it than Bernie like Sanders my and aunt, who's Jewish, who doesn't do anything really. So, do you know what I mean? Like, you just your know, aunt's your aunt's in law. No, my oh, so my dad's brother married a Jewish woman. Um, uh, yes, so yeah. your aunt's in law. I can I call her my aunt. But yeah, yeah. Not, I'm not saying what you call her. I'm saying I'm saying I was, I was thinking if you, you had any Jewish, Jewish in you. Oh no 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 no. no. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> no 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 no. no, no. I, so basically, uh-huh. like because so that group of men, the Kohanim, they're elevated, so they're not they don't want to dirty their blood with like divorced women or or converts. Like that's gross to them. And so then when I was spending a year in Israel after high school, I asked a rabbi, I was like, well, I was conceived technically by Orthodox standards, not Jewish, because my mom had converted conservative, but it wouldn't hold by the Orthodox courts. Uh Uh-huh. I was conceived. There are courts, the based in. You don't go to court. You go to like a Jewish court if you have a dispute with a neighbor or like whatever. And so, yeah, we like hate the government. We stay away. Um, if I was conceived, technically not Jewish by your standards, but I was born, by the time my mom gave birth to me, she had converted Orthodox, I was conceived Jewish. I mean, I was born Jewish. Can I marry a Kohen who can't marry converts? And so that caused like a ruckus in my school because the rabbis were like, oh, uh, I have to look into this. And I think the answer is no. And wait, how old were you at this point? 18. Because I was like ready for marriage then. It's like a... It's like a math problem. So it's I like truly a, was like. But so you were, you were basically like, hey, I'm about to fuck. Can <laughs> I fuck wed. these guys? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Did you have a Cohen or a Katz in mind? I think I was just <laughs> That's like. That's funny. Okay. Cohen comes in. He's like, you don't need to worry about <laughs> this too much. <laughs> we're just hanging out. We're just, we're just <laughs> friends. <laughs> it's casual. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. I just want to ask the rabbi if it's okay. 
And there's a lot of stuff like that because you also have to get genetic testing to make sure you're not you don't both have taste oh So you real I with my ex boyfriend like we got genetic testing done because and it is kind of like. No, no, no. I'm just, I just want to know for myself. That's how I know when, when Tova's like, you should do 23 and me. Yeah, I'll yeah, be yeah. Like, mm, okay, here we go. Well, the good thing is because my mom converted, my blood, my gene pool is healthier. So I didn't have any, I wasn't a carrier for anything because I have a lot of strong okay. non Jewish. So a couple blood. questions. When you and your boyfriend at the time, yeah. when you got tested, did you get tested because you were really considering it? Or is it yeah. like a, how, how long, which boyfriend is this? Uh, the okay, one after okay, college. But okay, how long? Okay. How long? Year, Where does he we live? We dated for a year and a half. Where a year and a half. And how deep in the relationship were, did you get? Probably like under a year. I mean, in this world, a year is like TikTok. And, did you, and I think in the regular world, two years is TikTok. I don't think I knew about the testing. How, how, when you got the results, were you like, all right. He was a carrier for something. He was. Yeah. What was it? But I wasn't, so it would have been fine. What? What is, is there a specific kind of thing? What would you there's call it? There's a lot it? of different. There's Tay Sachs is the main one. What's Tay Sachs? It's a genetic mutation, or to like, if two parents are carriers for Tay Sachs, the chances of your child having Tay Sachs, which is like, if you're a carrier, it doesn't mean you have it. Sure, but sure. But like, it's a really debilitating, like, horrible disease that your child will die young and all these sorts oh, of God. things. So if you're both carriers, so when we got tested, he was a he was a carrier for not that but something else um and do you i imagine that if we were to look up the history that when what's it called tazax yeah that after like tazax became a big problem the conversion rules got a little bit looser <laughs> yeah because we had to we had to add a little more to a the little. a little more water to the pool i mean that, but that's exactly it's a lot of inbreeding i mean that's, did you talk actually, to him about like what was that conversation like when you're like you're like sorry baby you're a carrier like what no but because what? because because i was free and clear i was we were but golden. now that okay. he knew he's a carrier he would have to he's married now i'm sure his wife also got tested and but like do they have at this point do they have like a dating app where like you know you can you can put it in i mean you might as well Let's no call. right well, away do you say it on up. the first date before you sleep is it like an std well, I think just so you know i carry says that the way that in regular colleges they talk about like get tested for stds and that's like the thing that like the health centers trying to push we were pushed get genetic testing done because everyone already has herpes from the rabbi yeah oh my god um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay um so so i think i'm always amazed and we've kind of had this conversation many times and this is where like where i get confused why i want to have your sister on 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 the podcast because there's like certain rules that are so wildly inconvenient <laughs> that like what what's the show your sister wanted to see this oh, feels like we, this was like a really perfect example and i want your 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 truth not the polite version the role what you version. think what you think of this scenario okay so there was this off broadway play that at um i forget what it, it was sus it was sus Shannon tab show and philippa sue was in it from hamilton my sister's obsessed with hamilton and i just gotten a raise and i'm like and my sister loves musical theater i'm like i'm gonna get us tickets to sus amazing blah 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 i got us tickets and then i don't think he's gonna think it's crazy because y'all have lent it's Lent. It's our Lent, but it's a little more intense. Basically, between don't say y'all to appeal to his <laughs> southern <friends. laughs> Between Passover and then another holiday, I'm sure you've never heard of called Shavuos. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Shavuos. There's 49 days. That's a period of mourning because there was this one rabbi whose students it's a lot of would days. all. <laughs> it is How a lot is of Lent? days. <laughs> oh, uh, 40. Yeah, okay. 40, oh, so it's yeah. 49. Yeah. Okay. So I don't like this Lent comparison. You give up one thing so, for Lent, most people it's like fucking nothing. So it's this period of mourning because some rabbi students fought and they all died of a plague. And so for 49 days we mourn. And there's a lot of things you can't do. And one of them is you're not supposed to listen to live music or entertainment. So that's why a cappella is so popular in Jewish culture because there's no instruments. Oh, it can't have instruments. It can't have instruments. For that time period. For that oh. time period. Because it's like you're like – what the instruments do like what it's just too happy it's too jovial it's too like but like that could be a mood where someone's like trying to get into juilliard but like every 49 days he like <laughs> can't practice well, it's not every 49 it's just 49 it's days just 49 once a year. days yeah, yeah. once a year but is there any other time periods where there's other things that there's are a, excluded um, like that yeah there's the the um like the many, nine days is also how many days a year and you can't talking? you can't do it during Total. the shabbos 58 days and then shabbos you can't yeah so then that's 
actually. <laughs> uh, 52, 104, but some of those overlap. That's a lot of days. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, basically, what it so on Shabbat and on the holidays, you can't use electricity. Of course, my sister can't go to a show on Saturday. It's Shabbos. Yeah. You can't, you can't go to a concert but this was like a random wednesday not on a holiday but it fell in this period of 49 days and you had bought the tickets and I bought you the forgot tickets. and, and she she, for, she forgot she, she was like it's the omer which is this time period it's the lent and she was like shoot i forgot i can't go and i was even i was like really like because i i get shabbat i get the yeah. holidays this is like this is and also we have what is secondary to the Shabbat is is uh, just makes sense but this does not well I think it's also like there are varying levels of rules like different people have levels like yeah. some people will listen to music that's record like on the radio but not go to a concert some people In will live. only yeah. listen to acapella music period and not see it <laughs> that like, is so there's there's gradients that is tough There's to gradients. imagine that you have to listen to only acapella music for 50 days <laughs> is very that, upsetting that, to if me. If someone's like really committed, they're like doing this pace yeah. and they're like, I'm ready. Uh, what? Acapella? It's I, like, no, what's no, that no. one group that does it? Um, the, you know. Um, the Maccabees? Pentatonix. Oh, Pentatonix. pentatonix. Like, Which I, I like Pentatonix See, a about lot. 49 days of Pentatonix in a row boop, would be, boop, you know. Boop, boop, um, boop, boop, boop. You're uh, just gonna sing boop, one of the lines. Steven, John Marco, John Marco. I, wait, wait. You haven't heard. The, okay, so so that what happens? So your sister goes. So I go. Oi. So I go. Ooh, is there any loophole? And this is where like consulting your rabbi comes in. Because again, like I said, there's levels to it. This is not cut and dry. Yes or no. This is why Jews are so good with taxes, by the way. <laughs> We've been looking for loopholes, <laughs> loopholes our, whole our whole goddamn and life. And so I was like, tell the rabbi that you're spending time with your not religious sister and you can try and use this as an opportunity to get me back. And like, oh. and at the end of the day. He so was, really, really mendacious shit. And, and your sister's like, been, okay. She asks the rabbi because she wants to see it, of yeah. course. Yes. And she's like, I can't go. And she didn't go. Wow. And, and do you, do you think it would have been really funny if he said you can go, but you have to be blindfolded and plug <laughs> your ears the whole time? But you, you can go, technically but you, be you there. You have to wash the you playbill know. in an open <laughs> ocean before you read it. But sometimes I'm sure the rabbi says yes. Yeah. And the question is, it's kind of rabbi you doctor hopping, doctor shopping. Yeah, like it's, it's trying to find rab- the answer people, you want. People say don't rabbi hop. Like that's a thing that they say is like you have to have your guy. You have to- so I look at this and I look at like the myriad of rules and the myriad of books and the different levels a- and the bending and the plying. And I go, how do any of you take this seriously at all yeah but john marco i don't see it as any different than like like a lent or like well I, it's more strict for sure or, or it's, it's, no, it's no 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 but here's, here's a game here's a game i like to play is like name a task and i will tell you a rule associated with it or a like literally yeah. as mundane as tying your shoes i will tell you what there's what a rule and that's why i think sometimes this rule stuff i'm like does it feed into you don't want to talk about G is there like some OCD thing going on that the enjoyment yeah. of these rules, but I, I see things like there was this and we had talked about it where your sister, the plane was delayed. Uh, so, so and she was visiting your family and she had to wait four days or whatever, because she was couldn't fly visiting. for the two days for Shabbat. And I think there's a feeling of like, uh, if, if it was my sister or my brother, I'd say, just get on the fucking plane. Yeah. Victoria, Victoria, it's <laughs> it's fine. You're not going to be the first Jew that kind of broke a rule. And what's amazing about these rules is unlike Christians who are looser with the rules but have hell or heaven, Jews don't seem to really have uh, – there's no point system because everyone must fuck up now and then. And then they go to the rabbi and they go, well, I'm sorry. What, that's what like, repentance, like, cho- like Rosh Hashanah is for. And yeah. Yom Kippur. Like, sure, so why not time. just go to the play and repent? That's what Christians that's do. Not, it must be worth it to have the, like for them. It must be worth it. Listen, I'm no, not, what? I'm not, I'm, but I, it's so impossible for me to put myself in, in that, in that perspective but, but what are your be, views people must love those rules do you know what i mean like people or, must, or or they must... feel or they're or as we saw in the recent new york times article which tova shared where where there's these schools hasidic funded school they're funded by the, the state and they don't teach them anything so they go well fuck i can't leave this yeah well i think all it's i know mix... is you're not going to trick me to... <laughs> 
<laughs> to, to like say anything. Not about the Jews, but about Orthodox Jews. I'm saying religion in in, in no in well, general. I think, I think all I think, the rules are silly. I think there's like a few things. I think first of all, when you're born into it, for me. Like, when I was on my way out, there were a couple times where, like, I kind of felt the same way. Like, you have to understand, you're in this world where when you're nine years old and you're learning all these rules, you go, I can't do all this. I'm evil. And I, you start your life like that. Like, you start, for me, I started my life being, like, to your point, I'm a bad person. I can't remember how to tie my shoes the correct order. And I can't remember this blessing by heart. Like, I'm already starting it negative. Like, I'm fucked. What is this, you know? So, I agree. I think it's it's that. But when you're born into it and you don't know anything else, I mean, it's so insular. I think that's why it's insular because they don't want you to see how but that's much why fun everyone doesn't else it bother is having. You, but doesn't it, do, don't you see it now? Don't you see a family member? Uh, I. But I think for me, four out of five of my siblings aren't religious. My parents have chilled out. My sister's not doing this because anyone's forced her to. My sister's not doing this because she has to. So for me, I'm like, she does find the value in the community and the – the those sorts of things that if it's worth it for her who cares that's how i feel but don't you worry that like sometimes sometimes within this community we we find out about problems that are like deeper like for example the schools so you're in the community and then like you're you have a kid and they're they're not for sure trained for life i i, I think my sister's not in those communities first and foremost you know she's gonna be an accountant like what's she, different about you and her that you left I grew up in a, in the Hasidic world, and my sister grew up in the modern Orthodox world. We're ten and a half years apart, and my childhood was Chabad, and her childhood was Memphis, which was modern Orthodox. So she had a much healthier relationship with the secular world mm. to be able to. She wore pants and short sleeves growing up. You know what I mean? Like she wore a bikini to the beach. She became more religious because she had. It wasn't – she didn't have what I just described, Grego. You're evil if you don't remember. Like, my teacher told me that every time you say a word of prayer, an angel goes up to heaven. But if you mess up a word, it's a deformed angel. Oh. So you're just – like, that's – it's that sort it of still shit. still goes to heaven, though? Just yeah, like, just like oh, – Making like, heaven uglier? Like, just flying, like, yeah. <laughs> in a diagonal. And my sister – Is that a real rule or just she, – no, that it's teacher just, just kind of said that? It's, it's the same way they teach, like, Catholic school, like, guilt and yeah, yeah. Uh, lore. And, and it's funny, like though. That. Catholic is usually like, you will burn in hell. Yeah. Jews are it's about guilt. Someone else, you and know. someone else. They're going to be yeah. upset. And, and so I, I genuinely think that's the difference is I grew up in a much more intense community and then my parents moved. And – in Memphis, it's a much more pick and choose, find your lane type of Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, you know. Um, well, uh, I want to get to this yeshiva boys thing. Uh, <laughs> before we go, the the the, because we're gonna have you back. I think we'll have you back with your sister. <laughs> okay. You think she's down? Yeah, I think she is down. Okay. I <laughs> uh, uh, no, it'll be fascinating. I just don't want to be me. It's one of those things where I want to be. Sure. I, I think don't I'll think be I, there to I mediate. Think, and I think she's also like my sister also. Your sister's. She's is, funny. Is, I, I wouldn't bring out if I didn't think your sister was like <clears throat> hold her own. She holds her own. She's extremely funny. She's smart. And it was just interesting when we went out to dinner once and we were talking about the kosher. We went to a kosher restaurant and we were talking just about how, you know, one place was kosher and one wasn't. And it's was because the rabbi, you know, they've helped him or they gave him some money or they did a favor. She was basically like expressing how it is like not a. It's a very broken, corrupt system. Yet at the same time, we had to eat at the kosher restaurant. And it's one of these things where I sometimes get confused. How can you know that it's not a real system, but you're like, I'll still do it anyway. Yeah. For I, I think that goes back to like when I was trying to leave multiple times. I'm like, well, I want to go out on a Friday night. And then I'm like, well, who am I going to go out with? Yeah, I didn't. This was the whole world. I didn't have non-Jewish friends. I yeah. didn't have non-Jewish coworkers. I worked. I went to Jewish schools, camps, synagogues, play dates, everything up through college, up through my first job was at the Orthodox Union of Congregations of America. Like every piece of this world was this. There was no. And if you know what I mean, they set they design yeah. it to be that way. So even if you think some things are silly or like, oh, that's annoying or like that's corrupt. There's corruption in comedy. There's corruption in this. Of like, course. I it, think it's, it's frustrating. I also, you know, I also feel a certain degree of guilt where, you know, I know like Shabbat dinner is a big thing for you. And I, I think there's this feeling of I'm like, fuck, man, I'm never yeah. really going to be able to like do that with you. For like sure. there will be like, what, twice a year other than the other Fridays I have to take off. Like it's just it's rare. Yeah. 
you know? And, and it's, th- there's a bit of a bummer where I'm like, God damn it, what a shitty position. For sure. That that it's it's in. And I think, like, in the beginning of our relationship, I definitely, like, that was a struggle for me because I also don't think I had those people. And I think in the last couple of years, I've cultivated a community of friends that I do these things with that, you know, of course, it's like, it's how do how do you integrate two lives like what's important like those big picture things you know you think about if people were to have a family one day yeah and, theoretical and people, theoretical people were state. to have a family one day like how would those children be raised and how much would these things and so of course there's like that looming thing but i don't over like i've gotten accustomed to that kind of like this is my thing if that makes sense do you and you've spent enough time with my mother now. Like, do you consider? I'm Jew- I'm Jewish. Yeah. But like, how do you perceive my Jewishness? Because I I've said it before where I had this teacher in in college. It was the first time I really felt upset. Where he, uh, it was my friend. Uh, uh, he didn't mean. You know, I said, oh, he didn't invite me to eat. This Jewish teacher had a big, all the Jewish holidays, he had big meals. And it was like epic meals with this cool teacher. And I was never invited. And I went to my friend and he said, well, he only invites the Jewish students. And I was like, I'm Jewish. And he was like, no, not really. And <laughs> I, th- I do think there is like a, there's a degree where I don't know, especially with comedy. Like, I, of course, like I've, I lean on the, the Jewishness because it's fun to play with and it's like the joke is the, the edgy joke I can make. And being with you has certainly made me feel like I'm more <laughs> Jewish by proxy. Well, I think I think even you aside, growing up, I I've redefined what like the Jewish identity is for myself, not just you, but like other Jews. Because I had to confront that when I left the Jewish community and I met other Jews who were half Jewish on their dad's side that considered themselves Jewish. And it's that same gut sort of thing where I had to fight the instinct to be like, you're not Jewish. And like, you know what I mean? But like for real. And, and I think growing. Hey, so it was like, Oh, my dad's Jewish. And I, you're like, yeah. Oh, that's, that's cool. my eye. Shalom. Um, but I think like when I was, I remember distinctly when I was little, there was a, a deli, uh, kosher Cajun. It's like one of the two kosher restaurants in new Orleans. And a lot of the like gift shop area of this restaurant, because it was like a grocery store and they had like cute sort of like oy vey Yiddishism type Americana Jewish references. And because I grew up in my world, that's not my version of Ju- Judaism. You know uh. what I mean? The like booby and the schwitz and the, the yeah. deli meat. Like that's not how my Judaism was. And the same way people are like, oh, you're so Jewish. Did you go on birthright? I'm like, no, I'm so Jewish. I spent a year learning Torah in Jerusalem. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like, oh, bat mitzvahs. What was your theme? I'm like, no men. Like, it, it's yeah. my Judaism. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. You know, That's like. so fucking funny. Separate seating. Like, it's, I didn't have a basketball. I didn't go to a single basketball theme bar mitzvah. I went to Hasidic dancings in, like, banquet halls. And, like, so as I've left the community and then met more Jews of varying degrees or or entry points i have started to embrace the like judaica judaism which is like the oh they i'm schlepping here mahjong Uh, like that and so i think like but even before i met you and your mom (laughs) like i've grown to love and identify with that as part of figuring out what i identify with and like what i find cultural touchstones to it's it's that like the Jake Cohen's of the world, like the chef. Like I think there would have been a version of me. Just for listeners, to, uh, listen to the episode with Jake yeah, Cohen. Yeah, listen. This episode, is a plug. Mm-hmm. But like I think there's there would have been a version of me even like six years ago where I'd be like, he cooks with bacon and he calls himself a Jewish chef. Like how? No. And yeah. I'm so I'm so thankful I never met judgmental Jewish <laughs> Tova because no. some of the things she yeah. says I'm like yeah. oh but God. you know what I mean and now I'm like Jake Cohen like I, I, I I'm so excited that there's like modern chefs that are doing it from a Jewish heritage and putting a spin on these classics and yeah. making savory babkas and making it palatable and like there's been this up uptick of like Jewish themed restaurants not just like Katz's but Edith's um, or uh you know, I, there, there was this one place I went to an SNL after party, <laughs> not to brag, um, <laughs> but it was like everything in the menu was like latke or like 
it was like high end Jewish food, matzo ball soup, but uh-huh. like elevated. And now I found like a real appreciation and love for that because that is kind of where where I'm at now, where I'm not that anymore. Yeah. So when I find like, you know, your mom's from Great Neck, that's so Jewy. You know what I mean? And like I, yeah. I also didn't grow up in the tri state area, so a lot of like Northeast Jewry, I'm I learned when I got here, mm. and I've now added to my identity as I strip away other parts. So like, I do think in many, many ways you are so extremely Jewish. And then like in my version of Judaism, like not at all, you know what I mean? Like, sure. And I I'm, wish I'd grown up with more. We're having Danny Jalas this week. And not like when Jewish we talk, at all. I'm <laughs> but like I never, I didn't have any other neurotic Jewish kids my age. I wish I had because I feel like my neuroses was very like singular. Yeah. Uh, where I didn't have anyone to like relate to mm-hmm. on that level. We mm-hmm. had a lot of Jews. I went to a lot of bar mitzvahs, but they all played soccer. They all were doing athletics. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "What is this?" Yeah, we, um, didn't, we didn't have Jews, really. <laughs> Upstate New York. He's like, beautiful do you remember? Place. Do you remember beautiful the first place. time that someone was like, someone introduced himself, and you're like, "Oh my god, that's a Jew." No, oh well, no, because I I was aware because of my aunt, uh, and then like there was like the, my cousins kind of dabbled, but but you know, uh, but. Uh, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like a, uh, you know, I, there was, of course, but not You're circumcised, like, right? Yeah. <laughs> How many times uh, are you going to ask me that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Until I see it, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's, we, we only have a little bit of time, but I do want to talk about uh, this new burst. Have you heard of? Miami Boys Choir. The Miami Boys Choir. No. Okay, so this has recently been... Now, is this because of the acapella thing that these groups exist? No, these groups these groups have full, like... Ju- if Jewish music's not acapella, it's they love a saxophone. That's the oh. one other thing you have to know about Jewish music is they love a brass band and they love a saxophone. So I grew up listening to a lot of Jewish music. Yeshiva Boys Choir is my band of choice. It's a exactly what we picture, 50... Young what boys do you picture before you said 50. that? What do you think, Russell? I did Yeshiva not picture boys 50. I pictured 17 young boys. I guess I actually pictured them in like like church robes. Like, <laughs> like I pictured so Christians. It's like keepas. Yeah. <laughs> it's keepas, yarmulkes, and they're wearing like shiny vests. And, and these are all prepubescent boys. Yeah, they're yeah. singing high. And so I listen to Yeshiva Boys Choir, but there's also Miami Boys Choir. Those are the two huge Jewish like groups that's the music you'd always listen to and like i guess miami boys choir started a tiktok channel oh and they started showing up on my feed but you know tiktok's algorithm knows you it's like if you're into cats you'll get cat material you get whatever so i'm like i'm tiktok knows i'm jewish it's been knowing i'm jewish so i'm like of course mm-hmm. I'm what was seeing the one miami. tiktok you just sent me recently that you got about the wife oh like looking into the phone no, oh. the one about like being submissive to your to your man is not necessarily a bad thing. And you're yeah, like, how I'm, did I get here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got like a homemaking stay at home mom Christian TikTok. I'm That's like, like oh, sometimes this is wrong. I'll get you know what I get a lot is is like um, two twin sisters are one of them, one of them. <laughs> no, the, no, no the, more, the, no. The, the husband don't. slaps the one on the butt, and it's like the twin sister. You ever seen? <laughs> oh, it's this? like fake pranks. I've seen that like stuff. video like three times. Different, like yeah, it's like fake prank yeah. videos. Yeah. But, but that wait, one in particular wait, what is, is that a one weird in niche. Well, it's like it's like there's like two sisters that are like talking. One's and pretending like, to and be the And then she's like, she's like, I'm gonna go to the other room, and she like leaves the other room, and then the husband comes in, and is like, whoa, and he like spanks the twin, like, the other twin. She goes, it's not me, and she goes, and then the other sister comes in, and is like, that's my sister. And it's like all like clearly, you know, I hate fake pranks. So, uh, but I also always watch a the full whole thing. fake Me prank. Too. And I, do you, get the, do you get the ones where they make the food in like stupid ways? Yes. They like put hot yes. dogs in yes. cake batter and then put 40 oh. eggs on top. Or they do the thing like a debt, like they're going to scare someone. And it like, it, oh, it, the oh. scaring ones is the worst oh. because they do, and, it, like, and they do it because of the Facebook algorithm I where they it. needed to hit 10 minutes. Yes. So they go like, Yes. 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 And yes. It's, and it's like to the point of insanity. And I know it's and you can't. And it's, I watch it's, it. it's what's it called? Where you put invest? What is it? Uh, uh, where you invest? You think uh, I've invested so much? Oh I'll keep yeah, going. sunken cost fallacy. Sunken cost yes, fallacy. Yes. There's yes, a, yes, there's yes. something I think it should be called like an attention sunken cost fallacy or yes. time where yeah. you really you're Just like show me I the have scare. to see whatever the fucking scare whatever is. Whatever it is, even though you know the acting is going to be terrible. Yeah, whatever's coming at minute thirty six. Um. So this is so 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 then I started getting texts from people out. So then Miami Boys Choir started showing on my feed. Let's like, just play play yeah. a second for so this is Miami Boys Choir. Hurry, Sadiva. 
So yeah, that's my boys choir. And uh, they've gone mega viral on TikTok. And it's this weird, it is this weird cognitive dissonance where it's so part of my life, but it's like someone discovering a K-pop band. Yeah. And the whole TikTok, everyone's talking about them. And yeah, it's just this weird, I can't explain it, but it, it's just, it, it, I like cried because it, I don't know. It was just like, my life is so separate from the way my life was in many yeah. ways that this conflation of the two it like sometimes is like very emotionally <laughs> intense yeah where you're like wait you know about that and you're liking it and like because my friends if you've asked them for years i mean you ask if i asked you like what's toba's favorite band all my friends non-jewish like not religious would go yeshiva boys choir like it's a running joke that i don't have good taste she in has music. a pillow and she has a blanket with max these ash little boys got on me yeah. uh, for my birthday like a blanket of their album cover and it's like 50 little boys on it and but it's like a joke you know, and but it's not though. But it's also but not you like it, yeah. But I think it was so validating that like the internet's like, wait, this slaps, and I'm like, yeah, it yeah. kind of it is K-pop. It is this like earworm, itchy music that's like high intensity, like big, big. I don't, I don't know how to describe music. Yeah, but, like, no, no, yeah. Um, here's here's Yeshiva boys. Like, is this not Queen? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what the copyright rules are. Oh, yeah, like 11 oh, seconds oh, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, let's just see. We'll see if we'll come back and there'll be boys singing. <laughs> I'm very, like, I still am very confused by, like, how these entities exist because the boys age out of them. Well, and so I'm just well, like, they, you, new boys. Yeah, you get new boys. But, but what's the, who's running this? Menachem Begin runs. <laughs> What, what's the person's there? name? Okay, so I think... Um, <laughs> I know. Ellie Gerstner runs the Shiva Boys Choir, and Menachem Begin runs Miami Boys Choir. I spent a summer at camp with Ellie Gerstner's sister once, and I thought she was like, oh my God, she knows someone famous. Her brother runs the Shiva Boys Choir. Oh my God. Have you ever seen them live? No. Do they perform? They perform so here's Now, that, would you go to that with us? Because yeah. we're talking about but going to a music thing. Here's what I think is so funny, because the... People that the places and the people that they perform this for are so deeply religious. Like it's like oh. black and it's like black and white clothing. It's that type. It's not modern. It's like oh, very, so they're not going to be like. But now that they've become famous on TikTok, I really imagine there are TikTok girlies that'll be like, "We went to the Shiva Boys Choir, yeah. Miami Boys Choir concert," <laughs> and these audience members are going to be so pissed that there are all these girls. Think of it like, like Hasidic Jews next to like, like little TikTok girls, girlies like with, in well, tank tops and. Being like, do they pictures. perform like, be real of Miami Boys Choir? Uh, yeah, do they perform across the country or are they just in Miami? Like, no, they're I don't even know why they're called Miami Boys Choir at this point. They're like in New York, but okay. they're playing in Lakewood, New Jersey soon. I think that this week, oh my God. but again, For I sure. would I would make us wear full garb. Like, I'm not showing up not fitting in, you know what I mean? Yeah. What, wait, then, what is that for me? What would they, what would that be for men? Black pants, white button down, and a keepa. Are you serious? Yeah. You're serious. Maybe a polo. If we go to this, I Maybe have to a polo wear. Polo and black. I have to wear a kippa. A hundred percent. Oh, baby, that's <laughs> tough. Why? Would you wear a kippa? But also, we'd probably. Keepa. If Russell, if Russell one of us, would you tell him to wear a kippa? <laughs> yeah, we'd probably have Shut to. Shut the fuck up. What he said? He said kippa. Hardly <laughs> even know. Her. Um. How dare you? <laughs> I also um, think we'd probably have to sit separately. Oh. This is like when I went to go meet her family, and like it's like, oh, finally gonna meet her family. The first thing we do is fucking separate for the for a half the Friday trip. night. The, Don, uh, so would you go to this? Yeah. Okay. I like. I don't think you like that kind of music. I do like. I think shitty, it's fun. I think it's like super anime fun. Anime pop, and yeah. so like that I feels thought like it was gonna to be me. like, like. Oh. What did you think? Go for it. I was thinking like gospel. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was thinking real, because religious yeah, music. Yeah, away. No, no, but you know, like, you hear religious music, and I, I picture something more serious or, like, more, not gospel's not the yeah. right term. I was picturing, like, like religious singing in church. Uh -huh. Not this. I know what you mean. You wailing. Know? A little wailing. I was wailing. thinking maybe, like, but this is more like, this is Sister Act. 
This is like yeah. when it's we're getting fun. With hey, it, there's you know? a movie. Yeah, I think you there should be a show. I have a show make pitch. Make the documentary for, of these of these Wait, guys. Wait, I have a Produce pitch it. that's like Matis Yahoo meets meets uh, Yeshiva Boys Miami Boys Choir. The pitch is someone steal this, make it a show where they it's there's a one to one for a while of it, but like they get viral on TikTok. They're in this sec- secluded com- community. They end up going on all the Today shows, whatever. They become a superstar like Matis Yahoo became a real star, and then it is grappling with their world and this fame like Matis Yahoo's mm-hmm. not religious anymore mm-hmm. but he started off in the black hat and the coat and everything and was singing about the messiah and god and all the shit and was spreading this message and he was the he we were like oh my god we have a pop star and he's religious so i think there is a show of like the downfall of this like group of boys religious. yeah and now that you talked about it helping one's career <laughs> i'm starting to understand why <laughs> i i I think you should make a documentary about these kids, and then and then you have the IP, and then you turn that into a movie. You should make a documentary. You love these. You love this <laughs> this kind of thing. Do it on the two of them. Do it. Do it on. Do it on like the the post. Because I'm I'm more interested in like these kids. Then they become 13, 14, and then they they leave this group. Yeah, but this it, isn't there's a career. So many, there's so many uh, groups like that. But though. it's not a career but right now. A, but it's not but, a career for but them But now either. they're going to be selling. They're going to be selling out. And but it's gonna be one of those I, things well, where, like, well, where's this money going? I will say the acapella group of my college, the Maccabees, if you've heard of them. The Maccabees. The Maccabees is an acapella group where it's like, oh, you people graduate and then you get new members. Yeah. But my year was the year that they did. I spin my dreidel and like I split my lockers in the air sometimes, saying, oh, "Hey, yo, wow. spin the dreidel." This song went so viral that now the Maccabees is no longer a student acapella group and they did become that group and they are still performing but it was when i was in college with them this group's been around for a long time but that version of it yeah left and we're like we're gonna capitalize on this so that does happen well we're gonna go see them and we'll do we'll do our next episode <laughs> after that um uh we we do have to uh wrap it up um uh, let's just do quick, quick, uh, quick blessings, really quick, just to wrap this up. See, I got, um, I got put on this last minute. Oh, sorry. Oh my God, listen. Jamarco. Could I get a fucking? You run the board for now on. You better count your blessings. Now I want to get a Yeshiva Boys Choir version of the Downside <gasps> song. That would be fun. Oh, oh that's my cool. God. Uh, uh, blessing. You got a blessing? Very quick. Um, to, uh, I had a, a, a really nice day date with uh, Nicole on Saturday because she was house sitting and she was staying in Brooklyn. And uh, But it was like nice. It was like, it felt like we were like dating again. You know, when you're like, yeah. it was like, because we weren't staying and it was like, we only could like go out and wander. It was really, uh, it was a, a really fun day. And then the second thing is, um, Oh, the Cure released new music. They haven't released new music since 2008, so I'm <gasps> very Whoa. excited uh, that they didn't put it out on Spotify yet. But I'm like, they just started touring again, and some new songs are trickling out, and I'm excited. Um, okay, I have to listen. To you. I o- I always you give all your like music. It, I give you. I, a know, sh- I give it a shot. You won't like. It, it's better if I do it with you. I think. Like, you, and also, I don't think you'd be into the Cure. So you, so you think it'll be better with you going like this part right here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like explain like backstory <laughs> stuff. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, but I don't think you'd be into the cure. But uh, other yeah. other things. Well, we we might be doing uh, shrooms. I mean, we might be. We're when? doing them. We this, gotta find this them. Saturday. I I took off the night, so we're doing shrooms this Saturday. Do you that's for you sure. don't have them yet, yeah, though. You no, but it's just not like a rare. Six days. Yeah, and uh, maybe I feel like it's gonna be like a let's let's try to listen to some of Russell's music, oh, and God. maybe when we're so fucked up. <laughs> we'll see what the value is. Send me is. a shroom playlist. Send me a shroom playlist. Yeah. We'll listen to it. Um, uh, okay, uh, my blessing. Um, uh, 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 Jeffrey Asmus, he suggested when we did that. Oh, that was Douglas was the guest. He, he made a joke about how uh, Modest Yahoo would be good for uh, lovemaking music. Stop. Mm. And uh, good good advice. Tova, <laughs> what's your... Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I had one and I just forgot it. It was about you, but... Oh. oh well... It was sort of oh, about you. Here we go. Um, uh, I'm alert. Can I say about? Oh, it'll be our anniversary will have passed by then, probably. But I, a thing, another thing I forgot to add in my allergy list is that I'm allergic to earrings, except mm. for titanium. So I can't even wear pure gold. And there's this one brand of earrings that makes um, earrings with titanium backs and then gold plated the rest. So it's the only brand of earrings I could wear. I love them. I'll always buy pairs. And my blessing is that John Marco is a nice little influencer boyfriend, and I 
uh, crafted a message for him to DM the brand being like, it's our anniversary. You're the only brand my girlfriend wears. Here's a picture of us from this wedding where she's wearing these earrings. Can can we do a collab? And they're sending three pairs of earrings wow. in exchange for like a TikTok. And I'm so excited. And John Mark excited to do content. I love content. We're going to, I came up with the, the creative, which oh, is like, it, this will come out after the 26th, yeah, yeah. where the, it is like she's allergic to everything kind of oh, like we're going great. on our date we have to like take the cilantro the, but not the earrings like yeah. something like along those lines oh that's good i'll do i'll do a nicer blessing <laughs> we, we did yoga and i'm sure it's so gross to everyone outside but we do yoga and like when we fall in our like corpse pose we always like kind of sort of hold hands or sort of a little <laughs> hand touch yeah or a little i'm sure if like i always get nervous like when i like fuck with you when there's like a leg over and i like kind of yeah. push you that someone's gonna be like that man is harassing that woman. Well, he was him. doing he, the, the yoga teacher thought it was funny. He like yeah. kicked his leg over and like kicked me, and she was like, "Hi, uh, like, the, like the like, bar for him was very low." Yeah, in class. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, and it's, then you know my toxic trait. I was like, he's flirting with her. <laughs> <laughs> He's making her he's laugh. He's kicking me to floor Yeah, with yeah, her. yeah. <laughs> that was me being like, bitch, back off. <laughs> this is the downside. One, two, three. Downside.